Glencore reported an 8% jump in core profits in 2018 this week and announced a share buyback of up to $3 billion. Its rival, BHP, saw first-half profits slump by 8%, missing analyst forecasts, driven by a drop in copper prices. Meanwhile, results are set to continue in the sector this week with earnings from Rio Tinto on Wednesday. Dan Coatesworth is the editor of Shares magazine and is here with me now to discuss. Dan, thanks so much for coming in. Let's start with Glencore because it seems like a bit of a mixed picture. On the one hand, we saw core earnings hit a record high, yet profit in its trading division slumped by 17%. So Glencore came out with some results that said debt, net debt was going up, uh, but actually the earnings, whilst it makes a lot of profit, the earnings were less than expectation. So it blaming this on trading losses linked to the cobalt and the alumina prices. Um, so really it, it came out with, um, like you say, a mixed bag of results, um, but I, I think you need to take a step back and understand why the share price has been particularly weak in the run-up to these figures. Um, so it, it stems for three problems. The first is the Department of Justice is looking into, uh, well, it's doing an investigation into potential links with money laundering. So that's really troubled investors. Then you've had Glencore's exposure to the Democratic Republic of Congo. So there's a new mining law there, which is been pushing up taxes, pushing up royalty rates, and putting restrictions on repatriation of profits for foreign companies. So investors are worried about what does that mean for its earnings going forward. And thirdly, Glencore is a big player in the coal industry. So investors are increasingly looking at uh, companies from an environmental, uh, social, and government's perspective. So this is buzzword ESG. So they're looking at Glencore's big position in the coal industry and saying, mm, uh, we're not so sure we want to back a company like this. So if you go back to the results, Glencore's come out with a statement that says, we're going to put a cap on our coal activities. So don't expect any acquisitions in that area. We're not going to do big expansion projects anymore. So that will, uh, that's actually gone down well with investors to a point it is still a big player in the coal industry, um, so it, and it still has this DRC problem, it still has the DOJ investigation hanging over its head, but you know, fundamentally it, it does make money, and it's still a big player in the commodity space, and the outlook for commodities generally isn't that bad. Well, you, out, you outlined a number of the key headwinds there for Glencore. So given all, the, all of those issues going on, it seems like an interesting time to initiate a major share buyback of up to $3 billion. What are your thoughts there? Absolutely. I, I do feel there's a bit of a sense that it needs to do something to get its share price back up. So if a company is buying back shares, it's an active buyer in the market. And so theoretically, that should push a share price up. But you know, companies should not make their decisions based on what's going on with the share price. But mining companies in general are quite strong financially. They can afford to do this. They, they can afford to give things back. So clearly Glencore is saying um, we think we can use the better use of our money is to buy back shares than to go out and make acquisitions at the moment. All right now let's talk about BHP Billiton because the shares are really on a tear at the moment. They've risen by more than 10% since just the start of the year and given the fact that the results weren't necessarily too strong it seems like a very large rally. Well, this is linked to the market. It's looking at iron ore, which is one of BHP's major products. So BHP's results missed expectations because it had some outages at a couple of its mines. But the Vale incident in Brazil with the dam burst um, has, has meant that Vale has removed some of its production from the market. So if there's less iron ore going into the market, people are starting to worry about is enough supply to meet demand. So that's been pushing up the iron ore price. So BHP as an iron ore producer is therefore expected in its second half of its financial year to have considerably stronger earnings if this iron ore rally can continue. What about copper? Because we saw EBITDA for BHP in its copper division fall by nearly 40%. Um, obviously, it's been a very challenging time for copper. In the latter six months of 2018, we saw copper slump by around 11%. But copper seems to be faring a lot better this year. I think, yeah, you need to take a step back with that one as well. So the first half of the calendar year 2018, copper had a really strong rally. And it was had this pullback in the second half. So that's the, the period which uh, relates to BHP's reporting period. Period. So, um, but uh, you know, this year it's looking much stronger. So, copper is a bellwether for the global economy. 
So it's quite interesting that we're all hearing these, so these sort of sounds that global economic growth is slowing. So you, you actually think copper shouldn't be doing that well, but there's optimism about the US uh, and China trade talks. There's going to be a sort of a, hopefully an amicable resolution. So that actually means um, there's still life for commodity players who are selling copper into China and other parts of the world. So I think this is just a general sense of optimism which is benefiting this, um, the metal price at the moment. So do you share that sense of optimism when it comes to the trade skirmish between the US and China? Because, of course, that 2nd of March deadline is looming large and we know that there's a risk that President Trump could raise tariffs on Chinese goods to up to 25 percent. I think it's $200 billion worth of goods. Well, it's, I guess if you share the opinion that his bark is worse than his bite, um, you know, Trump seems to be sort of, you know, he, he's listening and negotiating, but uh, you know, he is wildly unpredictable. It would only take one, you know, one single statement on Twitter for, um, for, the, for the whole commodities market to crash again, because uh, we don't know until we see the resolution uh, of these talks. But you know, so far, uh, if you sense the market mood, it looks like they're going to be, uh, the worst case scenario is, is not going to be as bad as people previously thought. Now, we've got Rio Tinto's earnings coming up on Wednesday. We just had an upgrade from Citigroup on its outlook for Rio Tinto's EBITDA. Um, that's on the back of high iron ore prices. What should we be watching for in the report and how optimistic are you? So, obviously, Rio Tinto is reporting its full year results. So, the, the, um, whilst the market will, will certainly want to see how well it's done in the year, um, the attention is always on the future. So, Rio Tinto's uh, low cost uh, manufacturer, or, sorry, a low cost producer or commodities, um, it's extremely strong financial position. So we want to know how much is it going to return to shareholders through ongoing share buybacks and dividends. Um, how much will it increase its production guidance for iron ore? Is a chance here for it to take advantage of higher prices? Um, has it got the capacity to do that? And I think generally we want to know, um, is it in the market to start making acquisitions again? So it seems as though there's a lot of optimism when it comes to this uh, company. It looks like it's set to report a strong net cash position. The dividend yield is at the top of the sector. Um, what do you think are the key risks? Well, the risks here, you know, there's always operational risks with mining companies, and I think people very much underestimate that. Now, we've seen with, with BHP's results, it's to do with operational issues. So you know, that is always a risk. Uh, there's a risk that the iron ore price rally at the moment cannot be sustained. There's a risk that trade wars actually result in a negative outcome. Um, and, and there is a risk that BHP, no, sorry, the risk, there is a risk that Rio Tinto comes out and says that we're in a very strong position, we're going to start going to buy companies again. You know, the commodity boom that lasted until 2012 resulted in many mining companies, including Rio, overpaying for companies. They then made uh, big mistakes and had to write off billions of dollars of assets. Um, are we at that turning point again where they're going to go start buying? So talking about the sector more broadly, if we look at the stock 600 basic resources sector, it's actually at the highest level now since October. It's on track for its seventh week of gains. So do you see this positivity continuing? I think at the moment, short term, definitely. Uh, look, we know that the, the prices are favourable to these mining companies. We know these mining companies are in a very strong financial position. So no one's worrying about um, can they repay their debts like they were a couple of years ago. Um, you know, management seem confident and, and this general positivity definitely seems to extend for how long, I don't know. Dan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was Dan Coatesworth, the editor of Shares Magazine, here to discuss the outlook for the mining sector. I'm Victoria Scholar and thank you for watching IGTV.